Hey, what's going on? Uh, we're at the back of the bus today. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but it's dirty. It's very, very dirty. And I'm tired of it. Uh, uh, I think in a couple of previous videos we've talked about, we've been battling some oil leaks and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I'm gonna try and see if we can make that a little bit better. This is after my kids tried to wash it a little bit. You can tell how bad it is. And where this is coming from, excuse the wind, is... Let's get under here a little bit. Oh, oh. What do we find there? Nothing. All right. Uh, yeah. We got some leaks coming from some of these. My oil pan is very dirty. And uh, I think there's a, tra there's a leak up there by the transmission tube. And so uh, you can see this collects a lot of basketballs underneath here. Uh, I do have it up on ramps. So it gives me a little extra room underneath here. But uh, I think the first thing I need to do is I need to take off this right here, which is the hitch. So. I'm gonna do that. It looks like there's some bolts up here that I can get at that should just drop out. So I'm gonna start with that, I think. Well, I got this one taken out here. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Cleaned it up a little bit even. Makes me feel better. So grimy down here, I gotta degrease it all. So one of my plans, or maybe I already said this, was to try and clean this up as best I can. Run it a little bit and see where, where it's all coming from. Maybe that'll give me an idea of where the leaks are really at. I, I'm almost certain, I know I have a leaky oil pan gasket, so I'm gonna pull the pan for sure. see uh, there's some exposed steel braiding there it's like rubbery there and it's, and it's exposed there that's where these are rubbing together I'm thinking that's part of my problem here on that one and they zip tied these together hope, hopefully to keep them from doing that but I don't know I wonder if that made it made them rub together more but definitely need new hoses there so Knowing is half the battle. Getting dirty underneath this bus, underneath this bus is the other half. Well, it's a new day. It's a new mess. Uh, I was having a hard time getting that thing out. Uh, so, called it quits for the night and uh, worked out a little bit today. And I'll show you where we're at.
So I got this thing out. Uh, I'm willing to bet this is a custom made unit here from Crystal Welding. They certainly did a good job. Um, but one of the bolts here was welded in. That's no fun. Uh, it's just covered in uh, oil and grime, kind of a mixture of oil and sand. So uh, and there's a little rust on here. I'm not sure how with all the rust, with all the oil, but there is. Uh, let's take a look underneath here. This mess. Uh, so oh. now I got. Easy access to my oil pan. I've never been so excited to pull that off. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna kind of go through and degrease this as best I can uh, without getting too crazy. I just want to get an idea of where my leaks are coming from. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. I have a feeling there might be one uh, by the starter here. It's always been pretty wet there. There's an oil line way up there. You can see my uh, uh, slobber tube. The tube came off of it. Don't worry about it, I know about that. Uh, always gives me anxiety to be laying underneath here, but yeah, I've already cleaned up some of this. <laughs> uh, but there's some more over here. So I'm just gonna keep spraying it down. I've been using uh, some mineral spirits that seems to work way better than any other degreaser so i'm gonna keep going with that well it's another day uh gonna be working on the bus here uh, i got like i said i got um the hitch pulled off so now i think i'm gonna drain the oil pan and uh pull the oil pan and that should give me some more room to off the hydraulic hoses that I need and uh, we'll go from there. I put a piece of old carpet underneath here. It gets pretty nasty but boy it makes uh, doing stuff like this a lot easier. There we go. This has been sitting there a while. This is only the second time I've done this. I'm going to try and hold this plug in there as long as possible. I don't know when it starts coming. Alright. Here it goes. Well, nothing silvery on... On, uh, looks like there might be a little something on the magnet there. I don't know. We'll take a look at that later. Uh, actually, this is magnetic, but there's not much on it at all. Just crud. I'll have to make sure it's good and clean, but yeah, there's nothing on it. Alright, I'm going to put this back in. See, it's plenty safe to drain it or to pull the pan off now. Now I'm only doing this for, or I'm only going to use the impact for taking them off. I'm going to hand tighten them going back on. Come 
Actually, I wonder if the gasket's going to keep it on there pretty well, I bet. I bet I could just hold it on there. Okay, they're all out. Must be the gasket that's holding on. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, while I present to you for the very first time, my 6V92 internals. Oh, what do we see? Anything bad? I don't know. I think that's about enough for tonight then. All right, I'm battling uh, the gasket on this oil pan here and I'm starting to win here finally. Uh, I had been trying a couple of chisels and I was constantly sharpening them here, you can see. Uh, this one worked pretty good too because it would kind of float over. Um, and I used this to take off, you know, big, big pieces like this. Uh, but then finally what did the trick was this wire brush here. It's really tight, so the bristles stand up good. Uh, a wire brush like this did not work. Not work at all, but this is just chewing through it. It takes time, but you can see it's it's looking pretty good here. I was thinking this might take days, but here we are. I'm almost done. This is all I got left. That looks pretty good there too. So. That's how I got the gasket off. Well, there we go, we got it done. I just gotta dry it off, put the new one on. That one there is definitely bad. As well as that one. I'm willing to bet that's where my leak was coming from. That's good. How about this one? That one looks alright, that one looks alright. So, something that the uh, local uh, Detroit dealer told me today is this is actually aluminum. This bell housing is aluminum. And this is steel. Which makes sense why this would strip out, but yeah. Alright, so I got two to do there. Alright, let's get at it. I can pull that out. <clears throat> I don't want to snap that off again. And of course, working over your head is the best. Ah. So we got the right drill bit now, and I'm hoping I have enough clearance. It looks like I do with this one, at least to start with. Let's try. This 
is something I kind of came up with here. This is stuff that I laying around, but I don't know. I don't think that's gonna. That's too wobbly. Looks like a nine, like a nine millimeter socket fits this just perfect. As far as to the tap here, like that is actually really solid. I'm tempted to just get a nine millimeter end and then feed it in there and then just do it a little bit at a time with the I don't know, I gotta research this a little bit more first. Well, the internet says that might not be such a crazy idea if these tools exist to do it, so I'm going to try it. I'm gonna get a little cutting oil that seems to be working. <laughs> Quick update on where I'm at here. So I have the oil pan cleaned up and I just have it attached with uh, one bolt here and the other one on the other side. Um, I'm actually thinking I'm not gonna button this up completely until I get these uh, these are the oil filter lines, and then uh, and these go to the oil cooler here, and this is for the transmission cooler. So I'm gonna replace all these lines, so I gotta pull them off. I got these two off last night. <clears throat> I loosened up one over there, and then uh, way back there is where the, uh, the other one is, so uh, for or where these two are hooked up. So I'm gonna crawl back there and take those off and it's a pain in the butt I cut the one hose on the top side here by the oil filter because the fitting was not moving it was rusted shot so I cut it so I can move it but then I can't get by this uh, cross member here anyway so that doesn't matter and I can't get this fitting loose and I just can't get any leverage in here because look how far back it is. Like I just can't get in there. So I found uh, that holder that's holding it all on there was actually pretty loose. So I went underneath and I tightened it. But now I'm thinking about I should just take that off and then I can pull the whole unit out. So I think I'm going to try and do that. Well took uh, almost two days but I wrestled these guys out I had to I had to cut this one here it was just super brittle and I couldn't work with it so cut it out and uh, you can definitely see here where it was rubbing through I don't know about the other ones if they these two are from the transmission lines I don't know if they were leaking or not, but I'm just not going to risk it, so I'm uh, just going to replace it. It's been a couple days now. Update. Uh, I got new hoses in here. Uh, there's a bunch of leaks going on. So I got those cleaned up. Um, I also found a, uh, uh, a bolt on my starter here. That was a little bit loose. And uh, actually, yeah, for the first time in a long time, there's no oil dripping down there, so that's good. Um, so we're going to get back to the oil pan here. 
Uh, I've just got two bolts temporarily holding it on. We'll put the gasket on there. Uh, talk to the local uh, Detroit service guy about uh, how to put that on and uh, we'll talk about it. So that's what we're going to be working on. So I kept that on there while I've been working on things because I wanted to make sure that it was uh, um, um, that everything stayed clean in here but you tell how much residual oil just keeps leaking down from inside the engine it hasn't had oil in it for almost a week now uh, it just keeps dripping down from everywhere I mean look at that so one of the things the Detroit guy said is uh, where the block meets the bell housing you got to put a little bead of silicone in there along with here when you put the gasket on and that will keep that from leaking it sounds like do the same here uh, so that's my plan so I'll have to clean this up again uh, use some mineral spirits on it or something just to get it clean and dry and uh, same with my the pan itself we'll clean that up just want to make sure nothing's going on and uh, yeah uh, one of the other things uh, they told me to use is this stuff called high tack uh, so I'm going to use that and uh, that's going to hold the gasket in place I guess so I don't think I'm supposed to use it on the front side but I'm going to use it on this side and I'm that kind of makes sense because this is an absolute pain in the butt to get off Well, I think what I might do, while this is setting, I'm going to go and uh, wipe down the, uh, the the mounting surface there, and then I think we're probably ready to start installing. So, here goes. Oh, all right. So, look. All right, so she's all in there. Sorry I didn't let you watch. I was just got rolling and putting it in there and forgot to bring the GoPro down here but everything's in there you can tell the the new bolts that I got here's I think I ended up using uh, I don't know for whatever reason those ones they were really hard going in so I didn't want to use them and rip stripping any parts of the aluminum uh, so yeah I cleaned up all the oil on there so if there's any oil dripping, I'm going to know about it right away. So I got a couple other things to check. Uh, I need to get a new oil filter. And I think I need to go pick up some oil and then we can test it. I think I might go do that tonight yet. Alright, it's another day here and I'm going to put on the old 51970. Uh, oil filter on the bus and uh, put on the air filter and then I think we're ready to try and fire it up all right I have the uh, all right I have my air filter back in that was a pain in the butt uh, I did notice I got a couple of drips down there but it's got to be way better than it was you know it's a Detroit some people say they can make them not leak. Probably not this one without an outer frame rebuild. Uh, so, plan is um, I'm going to depress the uh, fuel lever down and crank it. And what that's going to do is hopefully pump the oil around in it uh, to maybe build a little uh, oil pressure just to get oil on everything because the oil cooler is drained. 
the filter and the lines to the filter are empty uh, just to get everything moving again I'm gonna do that uh, and then we'll fire it up We'll do another round of that and then I will uh, ease off. I will let some fuel in and hopefully it'll fire. Hopefully. Just checking the starter ground to see if that was getting warm. me I just I gave it a little bit of fuel and then just I'm thinking I should probably add on that fitting. I'm not even exactly sure how I'm gonna get at that because it's, yeah, it was spewing it out. Yeah, coming from right in there. I thought I had that good and tight, I guess not. Looks like a mixture of Alright, so I'm going to have to tighten that up. I thought I had that good and tight. Alright, well, the good news is it was loose. It was very loose. I never even tightened it. Uh, Alright, so let's fire it back up. So one of the... Uh, anyone with this kind of old engine, you want to be able to shut it off manually because uh, in a situation like that, it won't build enough, enough air pressure to shut up. So it's right in here. I mean, it's, I feel it's pretty safe. Yeah, you got this thing, but I don't know. I've been sticking my arms around it and I still got them. So, all right, let's, uh, let's go here. area was all wet again for the longest time I thought it was these lines that were leaking I'm not so sure that they are I also thought my starter was somehow leaking I'm not sure that it is I don't know if you can see back here but so this is the back of the blower here I see there's a something I can maybe tighten up but I noticed there was a there was always oil dripping from down here when it was hot right after shutdown. Uh, it's hard to see, but I know when I shined a light through here, it just always looked very clean, too clean for an engine like this. And so, and I noticed that the oil was, it was coming from up here and then down here. So I'm not sure if there's a, sane way to fix that it's not leaking 
all that much. It's like, uh, when I shut down uh, on my drive, there was like a pop can sized dribble on the ground, uh, which is way better. It used to be about a two foot puddle. Uh, I mean, I've got some photos. It was bad. So, yeah. Well, that was a long one, uh, but thanks for sticking around this long. Um, if you got any suggestions on things you saw uh, that maybe I didn't know are issues, uh, by all means, leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Uh, we're going to be hoping, hope we're going to be traveling at some point, but uh, for right now, I'm just doing maintenance stuff. Uh, I've got uh, some other big stuff coming up uh, involving solar and... Uh, so, yeah, we will see you next time.